Karen Akpan is our moderator. Welcome. Welcome everyone. My name is Karen Akpan. I'm a member of the Bladensburg Health Ministry team where a pastor, Jamie, is leading the mental health conference, the state of mental health, Ledger leveraging experiences to renew, restore, and reset. We started four weeks ago, and we are in the fifth week of our six-week conference. This conference started, um, like I said, four weeks ago, and we'll continue Friday at 7.30 and Saturday at 12 noon through May 7. There will be additional gems to share with you on Saturday at 12 noon. We invite all to attend. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for Bless, and we ask you to bless our presenters, the pastor and the Bladensburg team that we will have a successful conference. We thank you for helping us. We pray that we make a decision to attack the trauma and the grief that's in our lives from day to day. And that step by step, we can be healed and all these things, with God's help, and all these things we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Next, I will present the health nugget. Children ages nine to 18 consume more sugar than adults. And even children between the ages of four and eight can get 21 teaspoons of sugar per day. Both the US Department of Agriculture and the World Health Organization recommend everyone consume no more than 10% of daily calories from added sugar. For a person who needs 1,200 calories, which includes some four to eight-year-olds, 10% of the calories translate to 120 calories, or no more than eight teaspoons of added sugar daily. However, using this 10% rule may still be too much sugar. The American Heart Association has set lower guidelines for sugar consumption. Children of up to the age of eight should take no more than three or four teaspoons of added sugar one per day. Older kids and teenagers should limit themselves to no more than five or eight teaspoons of added sugar each day. For reference, half a can of soda, just six ounces contain about five teaspoons of sugar. I'm sorry, we're having difficulty with the slides. Could you please introduce the speaker, Karen, and we'll try and do it again. All right. Um, this afternoon, our speaker is Mr. Terry Parks. 
for over 25 years, Mr. Terry Park, Dr. Terry Parks has worked with children, adults, and couples, and families through such facilities as juvenile centers, group homes, residential treatment centers, and prisons. He began private practice as a licensed professional counselor in 2015, specifically as the executive director, Dr. Parks works with clients to facilitate change through teaching effective skills. Uh, um, I lost my place for a second. Uh, 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 through teaching effective building techniques, building techniques to help regulate deficiencies in emotion regulation through individual family and counseling. Recognizing the need for sustainable services to, to assist in eradicating domestic violence and abusive behavior, Dr. Parks created a new approach, behavioral health to educate individuals on ways to improve, implement positive change in their lives by learning how to end the cyclic patterns of violence, regulate emotions, and treating addiction. Dr. Parks is a graduate of Andrews University and holds a joint MSA degree in behavioral science and business administration. He also holds a doctoral degree in counseling psychology from Argosy University. His dissertation topic was understanding the stay leave phenomena in intimate partner violence. Dr. Parks is trained in prevention and management of aggressive behavior. PMAB, as well as dialectic behavior therapy, DBT. He is a certified family violence intervention program owner and facilitator. Dr. Parks is a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors and Kappa Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Dr. Parks is sought after for various civic groups, organizations, and churches. That ends the session. Thank you, Dr. Parks. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for that, Karen, for that uh, nice introduction. Um, <clears throat> thank you guys again for having me back. I guess I must have did okay <laughs> the first time because I'm back again. Okay, so I'm just gonna pretty much do, you know, not do what I did the first time. Uh, however, and you know, if you have a question or anything like that, I like to see who I'm talking to. So if you do come on, you know, if you have a question, just click on the screen so I can see who I'm speaking with and the whole nine. Um, <clears throat> I think today, you know, the topic has changed. We started with, you know, trauma. And then I heard that you guys also got another training on trauma today. Uh, and then we talked about, you know, regulate, regulating emotions and the whole night. And today we're going to talk about, you know, um, you know, uh, COVID and, you know, did it change us or did it reveal who we were? What happened during those times, you know, uh, and how we can, you know, uh, who do we become and how we can move forward and what's, what are some things that we can do, some steps we can take because, you know, COVID once again was traumatic for a lot of people. You know, we lost a lot of people during those times. And, uh, we lost family members and friends and things haven't been the same. And, you know, you kind of almost don't want to go back, you know, to some things being the same. This was a great opportunity for us to, you know, kind of sit back and reflect and say, ooh, okay. But then, and see, a lot of people didn't understand 
I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get back to work. I want to get out of here. I got to get out of this house. I can't, I can't. Then when you're at work before COVID, man, I wish I could just work from home all the time. Uh, I just, and then it was granted to you. You was like, it's be crazy. I can't. And then you put on that, you know, uh, that, what that COVID, that, what is that, that, that freshman 15, we put on that COVID 20, <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, you just kind of say, hmm, I want it's in the pantry, I want it's in the pantry, you know, and you're like the same thing that was in there five minutes ago when you got out, and so, you know, um, it was really not, it was a good time, it wasn't a good time, you know, people, you know, you picked up weight, and, you know, it's just like, oh my God, you know, I just can't take being in this house, and then people, I actually like being in traffic, you know, if you ever been to Atlanta, whoo, traffic is a beast, you know, uh, and it's it's like a parking lot. It's just you get up in the morning. It's like okay, and you know, people were like, "I miss this. I miss it. I get to get away from home." <laughs> so let's look at uh, let's look at the presentation and um, see how we can. Uh, ah, let me see which one is that. The one. Let me see. Yeah, there we go. Okay. COVID-19, did it change us or reveal who we really were or are? All right, I did see you, Whitney, so okay. You got that slash Sabbath sleep off of you, so we, I got a chance to see you. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Now, um, there we go. How did COVID impact us, okay? We were shut down, folks couldn't go anywhere, um, you know, people were afraid to go places, afraid to do things. And, you know, we stayed shut up in our homes. And um, before it, I remember March of 2020, I was back home at my cousin's funeral. And, you know, I'm just watching it on the news, you know, it's like, oh, it's in China. And I'm like, wow, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get out of Michigan. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it home. I mean, and so, I remember going to the airport. And if you've ever been in Atlanta's airport, it was the most, it was like I was like in a horror film and everybody was dead and I was the only person alive. I had never saw the airport that empty before, you know? And when I got, you know, um, got to Michigan, got back to the airport, it just, everything was just a breeze, you know? <laughs> You're walking through like, man, you could sit anywhere. I could literally fly the plane. It was that empty. <laughs> I'm like, where is everybody? So I had these little canisters of Lysol and I was bringing with me. And uh, on the way back, nobody was sitting in my row. It was like the three seats. I was like, look at God. I'm here by myself in this thing and have a mask on. So it was good. You know, we're now adjusting to this new normal. What has changed? Have we actually gone back to? You know, the new normal at the time was now we're here all day, every day. You have to do your work. The kids have to do their work. And if you understand anything about like uh, ADHD kids, you're like, what am I supposed to do with my child who has ADHD? He can't sit here and look at the screen all day. And if you understand anything about it, you have to break up a, a ADHD child's day. You know, so say, 10 minutes, we're gonna do this. All right, now we're going to take a break and go do something different. Then we got to come back to this. And do and you imagine having to do that when everybody's shut up in a room on a computer? The kids are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, they're uh, instead of online, they're looking at games and they're doing and playing games, and they have their phones out and the whole nine. And people are walking in front of the screens and they're naked and they're forgetting they're on and you know the whole nine. So it's a, it's a crazy time, you know. And how did communication in our families, and if you, you have any input, I'm going to start asking questions. You know, I like to ask questions. You know, communicating with families. You know, now we're like, are we talking more? Are we talking less? You know, were we on our phones more? Were we, you know, people develop like family chats on, you know, um, social media. Um, whereas Zoom was free, all these platforms were free before, and then they say, wait a minute. We could make some money off it. So everybody started charging for everything. Prices went up. You're like, gee, well, that kind of is crappy, you know. And um, that that's what they was okay, we're gonna have family 
you know, worship, families were coming together, you know, on Friday and, you know, bringing in the Sabbath and then on Sabbath morning, like, okay, what do we do? I want to go out in nature. And I'll tell you, to be honest, I was still going outside. I was hitting that track every morning. Like, you know, I'd be out there five thirty, six o'clock, you know, and um, it was funny, funny because some people would have mask on. I'm like, man, you're going to pass out in that thing. And so, you know, I just constantly did my, you know, did my time. But what did you learn about? I'm going to stop my share and ask, what did you learn about yourself and your, your family during the quarantine? What did you guys learn? Anybody? Tell me what you learned about yourself, what you learned about your family. You know, you didn't really like each other. What? <laughs> what? My kids get on my nerve. Nobody? 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 I'll share. Um, Carrie what, Bell. Yes. Um, what COVID is you gotta did. show your face. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got to show your face if you ask a question. We like to see. And Cherry is such a pretty name. Okay. Come on, Cherry. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I got this new computer, so bear with me. Okay. Can you see me? There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's our okay. Cherry. <laughs> Okay, what what I um what COVID did for me was um different. My dad was sick. Mm -hmm. So it gave us an opportunity for me to be a part of the um taking care um schedule for him. So our my office became a telework office. So I was able to telework and go to his house and help take care of him and telework. So I I didn't lose family connection, I gained it. And um and it also helped me too, because before COVID, and I'm going to be honest, I was not attending Sabbath school. I wasn't. But when COVID hit, it gave me an opportunity to start attending Sabbath school. So as I attended Sabbath school, I now look forward to it. And I don't like being not going to Sabbath school. I really enjoy it, whereas I didn't, wasn't doing it at first. So COVID for me wasn't a bad thing. It actually helped me be more involved with my dad, you know, um, more involved in the church and even gave me an outlet to start doing videos for poetry and anything. So it didn't, it wasn't a depression time for me. It helped me um, be there for my dad. So when he died, all I had was pleasant memories. And I was grateful that I got to spend that time with him before he died. He lived to be 93. So it was a joyful occasion. So, um, but I was still grateful that I had that opportunity with him. I got to sit with him, listen to him play his guitar, you know, praise the Lord with him, talk to him, you know, and stuff. So it was just, it was just a really great experience for me with my dad. So. Great. I mean, that's awesome. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Right. You know, um, that, that was, I think, you know, from what I understood, church attendance and tithing actually went up during COVID. You know, you're like, wow, yeah. okay. You know, <laughs> the pastor like, yeah. Uh, it it went up. You know, I don't know what you know. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> like, Lord, let me let me go and return my tithe. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get it to the king. You know, I don't know what they were thinking, but um, it did because it made it easier to now just roll out of bed and turn on the screen and like. Oh, I can sit here in Sabbath school. I can sit there for the service. I don't have to put on clothes. I don't have to drive down, you know. However, folks are like, you know, forsake not the assembly. So we got to make sure we get over here and get back in this thing and make it work. So anybody else want to share how did it, how did COVID, you know, affect them? You know, did you find out things about your family or find out things about your spouse or whatever that you didn't know? Nobody? Okay. Oh, no, I, I, our family, we have a large family. My sister's on here now, and Pastor Janie's my husband. And um, we get together, you know, Christmas time. It's just so many of us. But for the last few Christmases, we haven't been able to get together. So I found out that we could be creative because, mm -hmm. you know, we, my house was the drop off. And everybody bought the gifts to my house. And then everybody came back, came to my house to pick up their gifts. We still did Secret Santa. We were wondering what, how are we going to do Christmas? But we still did Christmas, Thanksgiving. My family came in and they had to go containers. 
Everybody wore their masks. They came in. I still cooked. They came in and got their food and took it out. And then they took pictures of their families at their house eating. And um, it was, we were very creative with this thing, you know. And, and one thing I can say too, though, is, you know, when you come in from the store, you know, first, when you come in, not from the store anywhere, the first thing you do is you wash your hands, right? But now you're consciously washing your hands. You don't walk in the house and start doing things and they're like, oh no, I ain't washed my hands. You automatically go and wash your hands. As Soon as you get in the car, you're putting that hand sanitizer on your hands. And that's a good thing. So I saw, I told my husband, this is a good thing that we are actually, see, <laughs> got mine here too, that we are actually doing things that we were like, oh, well, if I do it, I do it. If I don't, I don't, you know? And then another good thing, I just caught a cold last week for my little grandbaby, but I hadn't had a cold since COVID started because of those masks. And even if they are annoying, we didn't get sick. So, so it had its pluses as well as its minuses. <laughs> Great. I, I remember when, um, like I mentioned earlier that I, I flew to Michigan for my cousin's funeral. I've never seen so many guys. If you ever go in the restroom at the, uh, at the airport, I've mm -hmm. never seen so many guys washing their hands. I <laughs> never, <laughs> never. It was a line to wash hands. <laughs> it's never been a line in the bathroom to wash hands. You know, some guys, you go in there, they'll come out of the stall, get in the mirror, do this and, do this and you know and out and I'm like oh you just came out of the store <laughs> no. you know but um I it, it was a lie I laughed so hard and there people looking at me I'm like I said y'all gotta excuse me I've never seen this many people washing their hands in the bathroom and everybody laughed in the bathroom because they knew it was true you go in there and be like well I'm not dirty you know <laughs> that was uh it was kind of wild but yeah it was great it was um it sounds great. That was awesome. You guys got, you know, got to uh, continue to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. Did I'll say, oh, okay, I'll go say ahead. Um, it was nice to know that um, my family was able to um, be in the house all together and get along and we weren't at each other's throats. Um, Cause there was a lot of people um, going through domestic situations because they had to be home all day with each other. So it was good to know that me and my family, we, we got along and we just made it work. And we, uh, we actually got closer and we bonded and, you know, watch movies together and, um, you know, pop popcorn and cooked and different meals. And it was hard on my daughter because she was in her uh, senior year of high school and she didn't get to hang out with her friends or anything or get to do a lot of the special activities that seniors would do. Actually, it was her junior and senior year, junior and senior. Um, but we got along, my family got along real good and, um, it was nice being together, um, all, all the time we got along well. And so that, that was a good thing. So, okay. Uh, Just one yeah, more. Well. I learned that I must've skipped part of the seventh grade. <laughs> my daughter and I were in the room together. I, my desk was along one wall. Her desk was on the other wall. So I could hear her all day, everything that was seventh grade. And some of the stuff I was like, wow, wow. The, uh, I, you know, I couldn't even really like help her with the math because it's not any math I'd ever knew, you know? And I felt like I was a little irritated because I didn't know the math to help her, you know, and, and different things like that. But she and I got closer um, during this time. And um, so we would talk during class. Well, we would talk during class, yeah. And, um, but we made it through seventh grade. I learned a lot, you know, um, about myself. Cause like, I didn't remember these things. I never, by the time the year was over, now I know some of this math that the kids are learning now that we did not learn 
you know, five and five does not just equal 10. You have to do a whole tree to get to that 10. So that was just some, one of the things I learned about myself. Okay. Um, the next I was saying, did you find out you like each other? Um, Tony mentioned earlier that, um, you know, there were a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> domestic violence and, and divorce going on. And as you can see here, are, are you, you guys still on my screen share? Can you see it or no? No. No, you can't see it? Okay, so let me go no. back here to share. All right. Sorry about that. All right. DV rates, domestic violence ro rates rose to 12% on average and 20% during working hours. Doing working wow. hours. So you can imagine, you know, you're in a situation where you live with the perpetrator. So now it's 24 seven around the clock, you know, that you have to be here with this person. And the issue is a lot of folks were, um, um, let me see, they were, you know, uh, fighting during that time. They were coming out and, um, Women were, you know, being told to, because I, I work with advocates, keep a bag packed, you know, keep the keys where you can see them, always back into your, your, your parking space, you know, kind of stay away hmm. from the person, you know, because it's like, when you, when, you know, when I read this, I'm like, okay, this is pretty wild. It's fascinating that during the working hours was when the abuse was going on, during the working hours. So you can imagine the frustration, like, you know, you're on a meeting, you know, and if you got children and mom is trying to keep the, you know, children quiet while dad's working or, you know, vice versa, dad's trying to keep the, the children quiet while mom's working because women do better too. Just want to let you know, I do have a older women's class and um, <laughs> the numbers were just, you know, skyrocketing on domestic violence. And I remember, I can't remember what the code was, but, you know, women would go into the store, like to a pharmacist or whatever, like you're going to pick a med, and they would say, um, uh, I can't remember what it was. I remember doing this on the radio, you know, a couple of years ago, and they would say a code that would let the pharmacist or anybody else know that she needed the police to the house. And um, you had to come up with unique ways. Like if you go to a domestic violence website and you're looking and somebody walks in the room, you can quickly click off and it'll take you to another website. You know, there are all kinds of ways that now you have to, we have to reinvent things because you can't leave and go anywhere. You got to stay at home. And so you're there with that batter and that abuser the whole time. So um, the numbers, uh, the numbers went just up and like, imagine before COVID 45% um, of, of the population was working from home. It rose to, it doubled. It went to 85, to 85% doing COVID. So you got like almost everybody at home working. You know, there were some people that were still going in, but yeah, um, it was, it was fascinating. Okay. Now a lot of grief. I know you guys talked about grief. I didn't get to do my topic on it, but I'm going to talk about a little bit about it here. Okay. Talk a little bit about it here, okay? And you say, well, what do I? What am I grieving? I, I didn't lose anyone during COVID or whatever. Well, look, you see here, we typically think of grief as being associated with death, but anytime you think, um, I'm sorry, somebody say something. Okay, all right. But anytime you think something is going to happen, is it? Do, and it doesn't, that's grief. That's grief. Grief basically is unmet expectations. That's what it is. So Tony mentioned earlier about her daughter in school. Okay. What were some of the things that, you know, she would be grieving? You know, if she were, if she were in, um, let me come back uh, off of this thing here. If she was, um, Imagine if you were a student. What so? What are some of the things that you could possibly be grieving? Um, socialization, um, just the loss of contact with friends um, that 
just being able to move around and see people. Um, you just stationary at, at a at a table looking at a screen. So she missed her friends. Right. And uh, just being able to, you know, be around people, um, special activities and stuff like that. Couldn't hang around, hang out with your friends and stuff like that. So think about it. Not being able to clean out your locker, cancel your spring break plans, not being able to walk at graduation. If you had graduation, you know, imagine you could have been the first one in your family, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, and, and, and big mama came to see you. And now you can't even, you know, you can't even walk, you know, a prom being canceled not being able to say goodbye to your teachers, seniors or classmates, um, no graduation parties, sports and extra, extracurricular activities canceled. Can you imagine when it, when it started, we went into the next, so you imagine what sports in the fall? Well, there's no football. It was like, oh man, it's my senior year. I'm not going you know, to be able to get to a college or whatever the case may be, you know, or baseball, anything like that. Uh, struggling with not being an in-person uh, for classes. Uh, no last day of school parties, no yearbook signings, all of those things, you know, you can miss. And then on a college level, on a college level, you miss things like what? Almost some of those same things, but you had to move out of the dorm quickly, not having a chance to say goodbye to your roommates. Again, cancel spring break plans, not being able to walk at graduation. Um, Let's see, let me go back to here. Not being able to walk at graduation. Yep, cancel summer internships, having to move back home suddenly. Same thing, no sports, graduation party. All of these things happen during us during that time. And so remember, grief in a nutshell is just unmet expectations. It doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you know, somebody died and I'm grieving it. And um, there's a new study that's out. And um, I think I'm gonna do a PowerPoint presentation on that one. I can't go into it because I'm gonna read it that much, but now it's saying that grief is not a disorder. Grief is not a disorder. Yeah. And so I'm just like, wow. And it's, um, this doctor that does it out on the West Coast, it makes sense. People go through things, you suffer, but it's not a disorder, that's natural. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that. Maybe I'll bring me back and we can talk about grief. I <laughs> have know, another definition if I may. Not being a disorder, yes, go ahead. Um, another definition that I've been given is grief is the loss of something that you deeply love. Okay. The loss of something that you deeply love. Okay. So if we turn that into unmet, how can we turn that into unmet expectations? I suppose if you, um, if you expected someone to live and they didn't live. Mm -hmm. You expected someone to live or you didn't expect it, you know that person to you know you you take your marital vows it says you know um to death do us part and then there's a divorce you know it's like wait whoa you know what happened you know or um you know someone a, a spouse you know dies or whatever you're just like wow we were supposed to do so many things this was supposed to happen it's unmet expectations you're grieving there's you know a lot of different um definitions to that thank you for sharing that Tony. Um, mm -hmm. So let me go back to my screen share. All right. What might be grieving? And then we move on now. During COVID, who did you become? Who did you become? This uh, was sent to me early on, you know, during uh, like the first year of COVID. It was sent to me and I found this fascinating. I'm like, wow, 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 wow. I think this was awesome. Who did you become? And they, we go through these stages of fear, then you learn and then you grow. That's just like life. 
oh, I'm afraid this happened. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let me learn from this. Now I'm going to grow from this. Okay, who did you become? Okay, if you're in a fear zone, were some of you doing this? Grabbing food, toilet paper, supplies, resources, and medications you don't need? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, let me start my screen share. Who's saying yep? I did, grabbing <laughs> food and toilet paper. I still got all that stuff in my house now, Pastor Jane. <laughs> grabbing toilet paper, Listen. you know, hand, Lysol spray. Hey, welcome to the club. <laughs> I've had, I have, I could open my own Amazon store with some of the <laughs> stuff I have. I'm like yes. opening closets and toilet paper is falling out. I'm like, why well, I need all this toilet paper? I don't have to buy toilet paper for the next two years. True. <laughs> it seems like it's never ending, you know? Um, but yeah, you know, people were, people were afraid. So you went out and you did, you know, uh, some things that had been as folk, the main one out there, knowing we didn't have a, a spirit of fear. We wouldn't give it a spirit of fear, but we like, look, everybody else going to be in the toilet paper. <laughs> and it's just like, you know how it was. You grew up poor. You didn't always have toilet paper. <laughs> you know, <laughs> anything will work. You got old socks laying around. You got whatever. Hey, forget that. I was trying to get rid of these anyway. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I grew up poor. I, I grew up poor. And we, remember back in the day when they had paper bags? They didn't always have plastic. Am I the only old person on here? No, paper I bag? remember. No paper bag. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were so we were so poor at times. We would take a huge, like, you know, grocery bag, and we would just crumble it up and roll it. Yeah, just keep on, keep on, keep on until it got nice and soft. Because <laughs> it's like, man, hey, my ain't buying no toilet paper. He's like, that ain't a necessity. Uh? It's not <laughs> what we're supposed to do, you know. But when you grow up, my mother grew up down in Baker County, Georgia. They didn't have a whole, you you make do. You know what I'm saying? That's what we used to do. You make do, okay? Um, okay, so let me go back here to my uh, screen share. All right. Fear zone, spreading emotions related to fear and anger. Ooh, did you watch CNN? Just watch CNBC. Did you watch all these? What? Well, is it? And the next thing you know, what was going on? People was like, "Oh, the China. What was it called? The China disease or whatever?" Uh, what the China virus. The China, the China virus. China. That's what it was. So mm -hmm. now all of a sudden, everybody looking at, "Oh, it's Chinese people." You know, <laughs> it's like, "Oh, about time we got a break." <laughs> you know, but getting closer to the end. Getting closer to the end, they started saying, <laughs> What's up? It's like, ah, we ain't buying that. We got to blame somebody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things we do. We start blaming other people for our issue or what's going on with us. And did you know that blame? Let me say this it's impossible to blame somebody else for your behavior. Did you know that? Because nobody yeah. can make you do. Follow That's me. Right. Follow That's me. Right. Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do. Correct. Say it again. Nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do. However, they can increase the likelihood that you no, will you do it. what they, you, they want you to do. You see what I'm saying? But guess what? The mind is a powerful thing. I'm not going to do it. How many people face death because they wouldn't give up? their Christianity. How many people face death because they wouldn't give up their religion or whatever? I don't care. I don't care what everybody's doing. Right, you can put a gun in my head. You can say you can kill my family. I'm not giving in. Pow! Ugh. Now, the outcome sometimes is not great, but guess what? You didn't do it. You said nobody can. Well, my guys come into my domestic violence classes and they, yeah, man, you know, yeah, Dr. Parsons, uh, my girl, my girl went through my phone and she found some pictures. And I'm like, oh, pictures of you and the family. <laughs> you know, oh, no, man. I'm like, well, what kind of pictures you talking about, man? <laughs> Come on, Dr. Bugs, you know. I'm like, no, I'm not looking through your phone. Tell the class what kind of pictures. You know, <laughs> well, she found some pictures of us. Oh, there's another woman in your phone. Okay, so uh, what's the problem? Man? What was your aunt, your auntie, who, your mama? What are you talking about? 
man, you know what kind of pictures. No, I don't know what kind of pictures. Just share with me. And so you find out, of course, you got some pictures you shouldn't have in the phone and the whole nine. And believe it or not, you know, um, some of these are not um, people he knows. You know, it's just like, I, and I never knew, like when we get on the, ch when we get on the chapter of uh, maintaining healthy sexual relationships, I'm finding out that some women view men looking at pornography as cheating on them and they left the relationship. I'm like, what? Okay. So that's a whole nother topic. But anyway, um, nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do, but they can create an environment. You see what I'm saying? That can lead you to, I'll give you an example. The guy said, you know, well, she made me cheat on her. And I'm looking like, how you do that? I said, so she like bought the other woman in and put a gun in your head and say, now you better have sex with her, you know, or that's it. But what do you mean she made you cheat? She wasn't performing her wifely duties. She don't cook, don't clean. She don't know. And I'm like, okay, so you found this out about her when? You know, I'm just like, did it? Because <laughs> usually during the dating process, you're going to find this stuff out. Like, man, she didn't even right. water. You know, <laughs> it was like, man, I come over her house, it's dirty all the time. Would my life be this way? You know, whatever the case may be. No, nah, man, she ain't doing it. And then the whole class chiming in, yeah, that buddy lady today, they don't know nothing, man. <laughs> I was like, all right, y'all keep these young girls. <laughs> you better get you somebody that, you know, came up, mama them, taught them how to do some things because that is a skill that's still needed. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that women have to stay home and be barefoot and pregnant, but those are still skills because, you know, it's like, hey, we gonna go out and eat every night because I don't know how to cook. You know, my nah, I do. I can cook, clean, wash, iron, sew, and do hair. So anyway, that's another story. But yeah, I learned how to braid when it would rain outside. And my sister had her dolls. I'm like, what are you doing? She said, braid hair. Let me show you how. I still know how to do it to this day. Did my wife's hair? Did my my daughter's hair when she would go out of town? I still got those skills. Anyway, here's how it happened. What's the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning? Tornado watch and a tornado warning. One okay. is imminent. Okay, one is imminent. Well, tell us, Tony, the weather woman, which one is it? The warning. Is what? It's going to come. The warning is going to come. I mean, that okay. means it's going to come. So here we go. A watch means conditions are favorable. Favorable. A warning mean one has been cited, take cover. That's what Tony said. I just translated. Okay. Now here's the deal. In your relationship, the storm is brewing. It's always coming. Okay. Conditions are what? Favorable. Favorable. You're arguing, as the old folks say. Stop all that arguing and carrying on. You know I'm from the South. Stop that arguing, okay? Conditions are favorable. You're arguing all the time. You're fussing. You're fighting. You know, um, every the kids are all over the place. You know, everybody's yelling. Conditions are favorable. You are, uh, both of you guys are avoiding each other. There's no intimacy. You know, there's no, e, um, no uh, compatibility, intimacy. There's no... Uh, spiritual intimacy, there's no, there's like five levels of intimacy. I can't think of them all right now. And sex is the last one on the list, believe it or not. Spiritual is first, and then it just breaks it on down. But conditions are favorable. When you don't take heed, it turns into a what? A warning. Hmm. Surely been sighted. You better get in the house and take care of your family because we, you won't surely will. Oh, Mr. J been sighted. You don't take care of your home. He will. When the storm is coming, you don't sit out on the porch and watch it come in. You see what I'm saying? You go do what? You take cover. They tell you, take cover. Go to the basement. And the, you know, certain places don't have basements. Get in the tub. Do what you got to do. You batten down the hatches and take care. So no one can make you do 
However, conditions can be favorable. And if you decide to do it, you still do it on your own. Does that make sense? Okay, now let's keep moving. I don't know why I went off on that tangent. Okay, what else? You were forwarding negative messages. There were negative messages that were being, you know, forwarded about other people. We talked about that. Oh, somebody said China syndrome. Yep. You were easily angered by family, friends, the news, you know, media outlets, different things. But at some point, we needed to move from fear to where we did what? To learning. Okay. You had to let, learn to let go of what you couldn't control. I can't control what they're going to put out of it. I can't control. You can only control what? You. You can't control anyone else. Okay? Stop compulsively consuming what hurts you from food and news. That was, you know, we talked about it earlier. People were eating food, you know, just left and right. I was laying up, just eating stuff like, man, I just ate a minute ago. I don't even know why I'm doing this now, you know? Uh, listen at the news. You got to turn that off. You got to clear the deck. You got to take that. Look, I'm not watching any more news. You hear, you turn on the news. It's like everything is bad. I can't remember the last time I watched, you know, like regular news. I just, I got tired of it. It's like, I'm, I'm tired of hearing it, you know, but you become one and identify with your emotions. You know, I'm feeling angry today. I'm feeling happy today. I'm feeling sad. I'm okay today. This is what I'm feeling. And sometimes it's hard for people to put in emotions uh, on, um, sometimes it's hard for people to put words on their emotions uh, or their feelings. I will, um, I have a, a, a client in, um, in therapy. And every time I'd ask her how, how she feels, she'd give me a thought. I said, you know, you're giving me a thought. Every time I ask you how you feel, you give me a thought. Tell me how you feel. And it was difficult for her to say I feel this way, you know, it took us a while to get to that point. Okay. It took us a while to get to that point. Now, some of the other things you were doing, uh, I mean, learning, become mindful, be aware of the situation, be aware of what's going on around you, you know, and how to think and how to act. Remember mindful is just being what present in the moment, being aware. That's what it means. Being aware. Then you evaluated information before spreading that which is false. You ever push some news on or hear something and then you pass it on and then you find out it's false? You're like, ooh. Somebody correct you. You done pass something through uh, social media and they'd be like, no, Snope said that this is fake. You know, whoever those people, no, that didn't happen because this is this, that. He's like, oh, well, uh, I look dumb for passing that on, you know. What did you become during that time? What did we do? Okay, now, oops, sorry. Go back here. Okay, evaluate information before spreading that which is false. Recognize that everyone was trying to do their best in a crisis. Even if you were out there, you know, gathering toilet paper and grabbing things you did, you know, everybody's just trying to do the best. What was that? Stay alive trying to stay alive, trying to stay alive, you know, uh, but it kind of showed us who we really were, you know, people were, you know, uh, fighting in line. Let me, let, let me tell you something that what I noticed that was different. Remember 9-11? 9-11 was different than COVID. After 9-11, folks were at the stores. How you doing? Oh, you can cut in front of me. Automat they were the most courteous during that time if you remember that but now we got COVID and you don't even want to hug your own family members you don't even want to <laughs> they don't come over here y'all can't come over here no we old over here child we get it easy you know that kind of thing don't bring mm -mm. somebody cough you know I was coming back on the plane from um I was coming back on the plane from Michigan after that funeral. And at the time we didn't have on, you know, nobody was wearing mask. It was March. Nobody was wearing mask or anything. Man, I had to sneeze and I was just like, Jesus, you know, to hold my head down. I ain't want nobody to think I had anything. <laughs> you know, they point unclean, unclean, <laughs> you know. And so 
all of that was, you know, all that was going on. But I noticed that um, you can no longer couch. Oh, call, couch in public? Okay. And so the, um, during, you know, during that, during that time, I just noticed that after 9-11, everybody was friendly. But during COVID, we were like straight enemies within your own family. You know, don't bring that over here. Mm -mm. No, we too old. Y'all got to stay from over here. Okay. Uh, what else? Now we move from fear to learning to what? Growth. Growth. This is where you, I think of others and how I can help them. Okay. And eventually in the stores, they start saying one per person. You can't get more than this. You can't get more than that. I mean, because people were going in buying total. And the good thing about it is, is, you know, in my private business, in my practice, I already had paper towels, toilet paper, and Lysol because of people coming in, you know, uh, when you're doing your domestic violence classes, they pay in cash. So everybody's, you know, paying in cash. And we just had Lysol. And we had the big things of sanitizer you get from Sam's. I already had those at all of my locations. You know, I nicely went and gathered them up and brought them home. I was like, hey, we don't have to go buy it. I got all of this. Because that, you know, you get money. I was like, if I would tell my guys, I would say, you know what? If the DEA came in here tonight, we all going to jail. I'm like, all of this, 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 but I know it's done went through some stuff. I know it has, you know, on the women's classes. True story. They coming in and paying with singles. There was one guy who used to pay in singles all the time. One night, I'm like, why are you paying in singles? I said, you danced last night or something? You know, and the class would laugh or whatever. Like, oh, man. Okay. So then he wanted me to see him and his girl in therapy. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm not going to see y'all in therapy because you're still in the class, but I'll give you a session and this is what it's going to cost. Came in and she bought all these singles. And I'm like, Y'all like have a basement full of singles or whatever. And they're talking about the issues. And she said, he owes me marriage. He owes me marriage. I've done so much for him. I was like, he owe you marriage. Dr. Paul, she ain't telling you everything. Dr. Paul, she ain't telling you everything. She ain't telling you everything. I'm just like, okay, is there more? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, she ain't telling you everything. I was like, so somebody tell me what's everything. He was like, what? I ain't telling him that I'm a stripper. And the room just got quiet. I'm like, oh, I don't even want to touch these singles. Oh, my hand. Like, ah, somebody just put them in an envelope and give them to me. I'm going to take a moment and watch. I'm going to pray over them. You know, but, um, hey, it all spins. But that's what I started noticing when guys are coming in. They're getting money from the woman they're, they're with, which they're not supposed to be doing. So, you know, but I only take I only take cash. I don't do that kind of stuff. So you don't know, but guys will come in with their girl's credit card. You'd be like, no, nah, man, you can't come in with that. You know, checks. Oh, no, we ain't taking a check. You know, so yeah. Anyway, let me get back to what I was talking about. I'm like, Dr. Parks is nuts. Okay. Uh, make my talents available to those who need them. You make your talents. If you have some talents, let me go over here and help over here. Let me do this. Let me provide this. Let me do that. You know, live in the present and focus on the future. Stop going backwards. Live in the present and focus on the future. What are we going to do looking forward? How is this going to change us? What are we going to look like? What does the world look like? You know, um, how will we be changed? Um, let's see. Uh, I am empathetic to myself and others. Showing empathy. Showing empathy. What does that mean? A lot of people confuse empathy and um they they confuse empathy with sympathy okay you know we know that sympathy is feeling sorry for and empathy is putting yourself in their shoes you see what i'm saying walking in their play like wow it's like showing compassion for someone man it's just really got to be you know, when I when I see people like when the guys come to the class for the first time and they angry, they mad about having to come. It's 24 weeks. They have to be in there for six months. And I just said, man, I I understand how you feel. Now, notice what I said. I said, I understand how you feel because I don't know how you feel, but I understand how you feel, man. Having to pay this money and have to come in here and sit here 
you know, one day a week for 90 minutes. I said, I understand that, you know, and you, you, you listen to stories and then you listen to the women's stories and you show compassion because you're like thinking like, man, it has to be horrible to go through life without any skills. You have no skill set on how to deal with your issue. And you show compassion. It's got to be horrible for you. Tell me what have you tried. Tell me what you want to learn. Okay? Show some compassion sometime. All right? Um, you think and appreciate others. Okay? You keep a happy and emotional state and spread hope. Hey, it's going to be all right. We're going to make it. We're going to get there. This ain't going to last forever. Okay, look for uh, new ways to adapt to new changes, because like I said, it changed us. It changed a lot of things that we did and how we behave. Okay, now I kind of see people still going back to the old ways, you know, folks coming in the house and nobody washing their hands like, hey, get your hands clean, you know, um, and practice quietude, patience, relationships and creativity. Okay. Practice those things. Practice those things, being quiet, being mindful. Practice, uh, you know, repairing relationships, you know, um, uh, reaching out for new relationships, that type of thing, okay? Now, who are you now after COVID? Who are you now after COVID, okay? Let me stop that and ask some people. Who are you now after COVID? Nobody? Well, I'll say something. Um, after COVID, I think that during COVID, I started studying more and, mm -hmm. um, you know, being mindful of my spiritual life and my time. You know, um, I've always walked. I'm like you. I get up early in the morning and go out and, and move about. But, um, now and I've made sure that and I would because I would put that on the back where I would go out and then come back and study but now mm -hmm. and I do all that before I go out so I think that I've gotten more um spiritual time more closer studying more reading more um reading my bible more I've done that more since COVID. okay anybody else like to share I'll share again. I um <laughs> um as um Sister Jane said, I've also gotten closer with the Lord, spent more time reading my word and got more poetry and actually started doing poetry videos. Um mm. and that was fun. And then actually being a part with um um the church helping out with the A V team doing Zoom, that's fun too. So I, I got more creative. Um, God gave me more creativity during this time of COVID. So. Okay, great. Great. A lot of people came out with new skills, businesses, you know, different things that they did because it's like you got all this downtime. If you weren't changed from COVID, something was is, is wrong. There should have been something that you got good out of ha not having to get up every day and rush down to a job. I know we talked earlier, um, and Tony I think Tony Hicks mentioned, you know, um, well, she did. We talked about DV, but divorce. Let me give you some of the stuff that happened um, during uh, divorce. It was like uh, the number of people looking for divorces was 34% higher, okay? From March through June, this was doing COVID. From March to June, 34% higher than the year before, 2019, Okay. Stress, unemployment, financial strain, death of loved ones, illness, homeschooling, mental illnesses, put a significant strain on relationships, significant strain. And it showed that 31% of couples admitted that the lockdown, they said, now listen to what I'm saying. They said that 31% of the couples admitted lockdown caused irreparable damage to their relationship. You remember what I said earlier about blame? Lockdown didn't cause 
your the the problems in your relationships. The problems were already there. Remember what? But now that y'all in close proximity, now you got to deal with it on a daily. Nobody gets to go to you know to work to get away. Nobody gets to go to the gym to hide. Nobody gets to leave. You're with that person. So the problems were already there. COVID didn't cause any, any, as far as I know, COVID was calling illness and death. It didn't say anything about divorce, but I'm going to blame it on that, okay? And it said that, um, it, it's called the, um, the uptick could coincide with what health and human services professionals refer to as the disillusionment phase the disillusionment phase of the phases of disaster. I guess you can Google the phase of the, the time when optimism turns to discouragement, your stress heightens and negative reactions often occur. That's the delusionment phase. You're like, I'm delusional. I, what's gonna happen to us? I don't think, I, there's no way, you know, when we went into COVID people, it was, it was wild. I remember, March it was April. I mean, it was April, and we were doing the uh, domestic violence class on Monday night. And I told the guys, they say this could be September. Nobody believed me in the class. We went to the next year. I was like, Dr. Paz, when is it going to be over? I said, I told you back. <laughs> it's so and so. And they said it's going to September, and they kept extending it. Okay. Um, now, here's the weird thing you know, newest. The new couples were the hardest hit during COVID. They were the hardest hit during COVID, okay? 20% of couples who sought divorce who were married within the past five months or less compared to just 11% in 2019, which doubled the rate. It doubled the rate. Guess why? because recently married couples were less equipped to deal with the stresses of COVID-19 than uh, mature couples. So you've been married for a while, you're like, all right, we done been through something before. Not quite like this, but we've been through things. When you knew and you just like, oh, but you said you love me. Yeah, but I'm changing my mind now. <laughs> you know, whatever was going on during that time, you were less because it was like you, you, you had no experience of having to deal with something and COVID just made you, everybody was on edge. It's not like, okay, well, I don't know how we're going to pay this card. No, I don't know how we're going to pay this mortgage. Well, Junior got to go to school and we got to get him in. You know, those things you kind of work out, but nobody knew how to work COVID out. Nobody knew how to work COVID out. Okay. And that was just some statistics on, you know, you know, what was going on, divorce. So now who are you? You know, let's let's say if we, we're going to, you know, you're going to create this movie about yourself. Welcome to the post-COVID world starring you. You're going to make a movie about yourself. Okay, you're coming out of COVID. How do you look? What did you picture it would be like? What are you wearing? Where are you going? How do you feel? Who are you with? Who's still here? Who's not? Did you meet and make do, new friends? Did you lose new friends? And this is for after COVID because we're still in a pandemic, but you know, people are acting like it's not. They're lifting, you know, the ban on, uh, not ban, but they're lifting the uh, mask thing on planes. I'm like, I'm still gonna wear my mask on the plane. I think I'll wear it even if they say there's nothing else to fear about COVID. I'm still gonna wear a mask. Um, being in that tight two with these folks that's <laughs> coughing and barking. Um, yeah, who are we now after COVID? These are some of the things you can do. If you picture you making a, a, a movie of yourself, these are some of the things that you can um, find. I just pulled this stuff down. Um, and yeah, then another thing you can do is um, write a letter to the future self, okay? Write a letter. What do you wish for yourself in that letter? What do you wish for yourself? What do you want yourself to remember? Reflect on what you have become so far and what you, you, you want your future self um, to not forget. I'm sorry, that should be not forget, okay? What you want your future self not to forget, okay? 
Remind yourself of your most important lessons that you've learned during this time. Remind yourself, okay? And wish yourself well and express other wishes you have for yourself, okay? Other wishes you have for yourself. These are some ways of coming out of this whole, you know, COVID thing, all right? And then visualize your future self, okay? The power of, visual, uh, of, of uh, visualization, okay? When we, when we visualize, self-actualize, things like that, it's so powerful because it can help us achieve our goals, you know, um, both uh, professionally and personally. Okay, um, ways to do visualization. Of course, close your eyes. There's mindfulness and there's guided imagery. Um, do we have any therapists on here tonight? Anybody? No. Any therapists in the house other than myself? Okay, guided image. Have you ever heard of guided imagery? Anybody ever heard of guided imagery? Okay, so guided imagery is where you close your eyes and someone is talking and it's uh, imagine being here. You're, and you're doing this and you're doing this. And now you come over here to this cliff or this mountain and you look over and you see the sun. That type of thing is guided imagery. You're guiding someone, and just basically getting, you know, ah, some relaxation, some focus, you know, being, you know, um, um, being aware, you know, of uh, your emotions and um, <clears throat> being mindful. Okay, those are some of the things. Another uh, thing is being mindful, okay? You know, uh, meditation. I know some people are like, you know, well, meditation ain't a good thing or whatever. Meditation is actually good because if it wasn't, why would we call it the hymn of meditation? <laughs> hymn of meditation, okay? Getting into uh, individual family and group therapy. Go get therapy. We all need therapy. We all need therapy. Somebody tell you, ain't nothing wrong with me. That's the first time a sign to let me know you need therapy. You <laughs> said, ain't nothing wrong with you. You know, you can go in and get therapy just to tune up. You see what I'm saying? Hey, and I guarantee you go in there and you start talking. You'd be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. You ain't house, your kids, your mama, nobody. you like, man, I didn't even know I was holding on to this. I didn't even know that was blocking me from achieving my goals. Yeah, sometimes talk, talk therapy works, okay? Um, so getting back to, um, you know, some of the things that, some of the, some of the things that we can do, okay? And I think that may be the end of my PowerPoint. Let me see. Yep, that's it, okay? So when we're talking about some of the things you can do, meditation, okay? Um, meditation, I think John Kabat-Zinn said, what is medica uh, medication? What is meditation, okay? If you are there, all right, and open-hearted. So if you're present in a moment and open-hearted, anything can be meditation. Just think about that, okay? So when we meditate, all right? Sister uh, Cherry uh, Cherry Bell, <laughs> I almost said Cherry Berry, but Cherry Bell, I knew it ended with a B. Okay, reflect on this question. Open your heart and be present in the moment of your life, in this moment of your life, okay? Be present, noticing any changes in your experience, okay? Anything can be meditation if you are present non-judgmentally and with an open heart. We don't judge. I think we talked about that last time. Why don't we judge? Because judgments block goals. They block vision. They block what we're trying to get accomplished. If you've ever blocked anything, or I mean, if you've ever judged anything, any process, any, any, any um, person, and then you realize Man, if I just had opened my mouth and said something, I could have got this. Oh, everybody was saying this about this person, but then when I talk to them, now it's like, wow, they're not like everybody said they are. Judgment blocks your goals, okay? Meditate on your life experiences starting with this moment, staying present for some time before changing the focus of your attention. 
you got to connect to that that um uh, um connect in that moment then practice having a teflon mind you know what that is what happens to teflon remember um what's his name uh john Gotti was the teflon don what did that mean anybody Ms. janie you say you cook you know about teflon tell me what teflon do what happens with teflon I don't know. Teflon, nothing sticks to Teflon. Okay? Nothing sticks to Teflon. You got to practice having the Teflon mind. That's okay, McJane. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I know you're cooking in that cast iron skillet. I do. I got, I got one with um, lines in it. <laughs> so my food look like I grilled it outside. <laughs> Yeah, you do you do your cornbread and your cast iron skillet? That's the best cornbread and cast Isn't iron it? skillet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so uh Teflon mind. All right, don't react to potentially stressful situations, criticisms, or anything else that might stick to you and cause needless suffering. Okay, remember what I said: suffering. Why does suffering happen? Because people are not letting go of the pain. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. OK, instead, let these ex experiences slide right through your awareness Woo. like water off a duck's back mm -hmm. and they ain't bothered by that. They ain't going to do what they do. That's what they do. Yep. What is that? <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. You know, has nothing to do with me. What's the old saying? That's your little red wagon. You know, <laughs> you got to carry that. Oh, I'll be telling my age on here. <laughs> And I'm not that old. I just grew up around a lot of old Southern folk. <laughs> All right. Dealing with distractions. Okay. Distractions are ever present. You know, we on here, folks, phones going off, people knocking at your door, phone call, all that kind of stuff. But don't get, uh, don't get frustrated with distractions for they are simply reminders that what? To get back to what we are doing. That's what it is. Oh, I was distracted. Let me get back to them doing. And dealing with them is a natural part of practicing mindfulness. You know, when you're trying to sit and be mindful, I see folks sitting in church sometime and, they, you know, they sitting there, they're being mindful or maybe they sleep. I don't know. You know, but I'm thinking they're being mindful, especially if a good song is going and you just mm, the hymn of meditation, you're thinking about some things or whatever. Then there's a distraction. The drum will fall off of his stool or whatever. Everybody wake up. Okay, that's just a distraction. I got to get back to what I was doing. You know, when you drift or get distracted, simply bring yourself back to the present moment again and again and again and again. That's all you got to do because distractions are simply a part of the world. Okay, makes sense. All right, now, my last point before we go into question, I don't even know what time my watch is dead. Did I go over time? I don't even know. Okay, just leaving time here. Okay, now, here we go. Um, take hold of your mind. Take hold of your mind. How do you take hold of your mind? Taking hold of your mind means you practice directing your mind where you want it to be. You practice directing your mind where you want it to be. All right? We have many mental windows. I like to call them apps, okay? We have mental windows and apps to thoughts, emotions, and bodily sensations, as well as windows to each of our senses and to the environment around us. You ever look on somebody's computer and they got all these windows open? <laughs> you know, I got all these windows open. On their phone, they got all these apps open. Open the window or the app of your choosing and look through it, keeping the other window shut. If another window or app blows open, do what? Simply shut it gently and go back looking through that window. That's how you put your mind. That's how you take control of your mind, putting it where you want it to be. You ever see somebody constantly going, he's like, you got too many apps open. You need to close some of them, close some of them windows. And I guarantee you, you can look on their computer and you will see their computers the same way. Look at all the windows they got open. 
Why you got all these windows open? Close those down. You're doing too much. Take control of your mind. Okay. Here ended the lesson. Did you catch the anointing today? Get your Bibles. <laughs> and then what Joel say, repeat after me. <laughs> this is my Bible. That's right. It is what I say I am or something like that. <laughs> questions. I believe this is the question period. Maybe there's no questions today. Like the pastor say, I just want to stop by to tell you, I'm not going to keep you long today. I just stopped by to tell you God loves you. And five hours later, you say, man, you said you weren't going to keep us long. <laughs> well, I, I don't have any que a question, but I think this was good. And it made me think of um, COVID. And, you know, during COVID, you ended up doing things that you didn't think you could do, um, ladies. Like, for instance, you know, not getting our nails done and the <laughs> hair salons were closed that we couldn't get our hair done. And it made me think, you know, I made it through those times. I made it through yeah. those times without running to the hair salon and the nail salon and, and things like that. And um, even I admire these young parents like my granddaughter who have little babies at home and they're working. They are working with little babies. I, I even told my granddaughter yesterday, I don't know how she does it. You know, because when I keep her little kids, it's no way I could be sitting there in front of a computer. You know, um, I'm entertaining them. But she, it's, and it's just amazing how we can do what we have to do. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. We can be so fearful when we first hear, oh, no, COVID, everything's going to shut down. You know, but we made it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my um, my uh, my barber, he started coming to me, you know, and I wow. said, you know, I think I kind of like this, you know, <laughs> but I gave him I gave him more money than I mm -hmm. normally would, you know what I'm saying to cut my hair. So when he came over, I think I may have added like, you know, 30 bucks more to a haircut, you know, mm -hmm. and because it was how is he going to make his money if people are not coming to the shop, you know? Yes. And then his wife was fearful of him coming and bringing COVID home, but it's like, okay, look, if I'm not working, you know, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? You know, I, I got a, and, and sure enough, she, she, she works in the whole nine, but at the same time, it's just something about a man. If we feel neat, we're not doing, we, this is us. All right. We got to be doing something, you know? And if my hands, if I'm not doing anything, I just don't feel like I'm contributing. You know, I don't know about these young guys today, <laughs> you know, well, maybe, maybe you get your age yet, you know, <laughs> nah, right. I just, I, I can't, I just can't sit around and just like do nothing. You know, I was like, man, if I hit the lottery, you know, what would I do? I just can't imagine not doing anything. You know, you see, that's why you see those people at Walmart, those readers are generally, you know, older person because we've been, well, we've been conditioned ever since we were either, you know, 14, 15, 16 to work. And so all you've known is I've been working all of my life. And then when you stop, yeah, you know, it's like, man, you die. He's like, man, I done did. No, I got to keep working. I just, you condition, you get. So yeah, I get it. It, it, it was, and you know, uh, uh, Miss Janie, let me tell you, men go get Manny Petty's too. Yes. I had to flip my own nails, <laughs> <laughs> flip my toes. So it wasn't looking like, you know, uh, 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 my wife was sleeping with a tiger. <laughs> like, hey, look at these sheets, man. Right. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we had to learn some, we had to learn some things we had to make do. And I was the only one going out. I was the only one going out, you know, mm -hmm. going to Sam's Club and getting <laughs> stuff and nothing's on the shelf and I'm bringing it back like, you know, I'm a caveman. <laughs> you know, take the food, woman. You know, take all of this stuff. I'm like, look, I done went and got all of this. Y'all better come out to this car and get this stuff. I ain't bringing it up now. <laughs> you know? All the time. Miss Smith, like you want to say something? Yeah, I do. <laughs> what I liked about it is, you know, <clears throat> my job, I'm in, I'm in administration. So administration created a lot of meetings. And mm -hmm. so it was great to get up. And if you have a meeting, 
You know, you just don't even have to go through all that. You have a meeting after your day's work, you can have, now it was good and bad because you would have your meeting at four. You didn't have to say, okay, I got to stay at the job and come home late. After that meeting was over, you just do what you have to do, go to bed. <laughs> then, then sometimes I would take it off and I would show, to I show my face and I would, my husband would make me dinner. So I would sit there and eat dinner while I'm having a meeting. They didn't know. So, you know, that's the, that was the best part. I mean, you know, you had board meetings, you don't have to stay at the school after school, you have the board meetings and you leave at seven o'clock and then, but then the other side of it, they didn't know how to end the meetings because everybody's at home <laughs> and everybody's right. just talking and talking. And before you know it, it's four o'clock and you look at it, it's seven o'clock and you say, okay, this meeting has to end, you know, but so, um, so I, I like that. And I learned the computer more. I learned Zoom more, how to do this. And I met people over the uh, computer. And and um, so that was a good thing, those meetings, because I'm in a lot of meetings. And I and then I was home in my own study, getting my reports done because it's financial. So sometimes you, you know, in my office, I guess people just come to me and talk all the time. I guess they just want to just pour stuff out. So I was able to get my reports done on time and a timely manner, less stress. Then my husband, he's a retired minister. He was home. And so, I, you know, at, sometimes I would get so busy at work, I wouldn't eat. I'd grab little carrots or something. But every day he would fix me lunch. He would call me, come on, come on, you got to come down for lunch. Or either he would go get me lunch because he likes to cook. So that was great. So, you know, but that was the good thing about, you know, COVID as far as those meetings. I mean, because I had meetings and I didn't have to get home late because we would have Zoom meetings. And that was, that's, and we still do. We still have Zoom meetings. Now I'm, we're in school now, but when I come home, they say, okay, we're going to have a virtual school meeting. So now when I'm driving, which isn't good, I'm driving and then I have my iPad on the seat and then I'm in a virtual meeting. So by the time I get home, sometimes it's still there when I get home. So I'll sit in the driveway and try to see how long this meeting going to go. But um, that's, that's just great. I don't think we ever going to go back having in-person meetings again. <laughs> Ms. Smith, I'm concerned about you. I really am. <laughs> You're driving with your iPad down and in a meeting. I'm concerned about that. <laughs> okay, be careful. Be careful. I do. Yeah, it's um, yeah, we 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 we've learned a lot. You know, we've learned that, you know, um, I think one of the things we learned is is that we don't have to be in a building to learn. That's you know? right. Yeah. We don't have to be in a building to learn. We can do a lot of, um, you know, things from being on a computer. It's not conducive to everything. You know, you got kids who are not used to this. I, you know, right. I can't be around my friends. And then you have some people who love it. And then there were people who were working from home before COVID even started, That's you know? Um, so it did make it difficult for some, you know, folks, but then it showed us, you know, other ways to do things. It sounds like, you know, Ms. Smith, it sounds like you have a, a, a job where y'all just meet to meet. Yeah, we <laughs> do. meeting time yet? <laughs> okay, we meet time. All right. It's, what we got today? What we talking about today? <laughs> yeah, it is sad, but it, I'm glad, glad we're back because we did miss each other. We met, but you yeah. know, you it's nothing like that human touch and seeing everybody in, you know, I, I did miss that. So I am glad we're back. Good. Dr. Parks, we have a hand up. Marilyn. Oh, Marilyn. How are you Hello, doing, Marilyn? Dr. Parks. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing well. I just want to share, um, like everyone else is doing, about the blessings of COVID. Okay. So I'll start with, um, well, my husband was home. That was great. We get to hang out together. My tennis game improved because he would <laughs> sneak out and play tennis. And... Um, I did a lot of cooking. I tried a lot of new recipes and Charles was my guinea pig. So, you know, we, that worked out quite well. Is but Charles still the, alive? He's still alive, yes. Okay. So one of the biggest things <laughs> is um, I started a new business. So I have my other business and I started, um, this is a partnership, um, executive leadership coaching and business coaching. So we have, so that happened during COVID. Um, and there are a bunch of other things I did and was involved in. I'm a little tired of Zoom, but I started doing webinars um, to help promote my business and be working in this place of doing videos so we can build out on the webinars. So it was all good, all 
positive for me. I stayed inside. And the other thing that I benefited from, I saved money. I cut back on shopping and all that stuff. And I just used the clothes that I have in my closet. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Uh, and, and Marilyn, now that you mentioned that, this is, this is a weird thing. This is the truth. Um, sometimes I have my clients come, like if they're doing domestic violence classes or anger management classes, and they'll pay off the whole amount. You know, they'll pay mm. off the whole amount at one time. Cause they're like, man, I don't want to be coming over here nickel and dime and you just here, take all of this. So all I gotta do is come to class. I'm like, okay, great. This one guy came like just when we had started going to online classes and he paid for all of his classes up front. Mm -hmm. I carried that money around in my wallet cause he gave like all hundreds and I wasn't going to the bank, you know, just all hundreds in a wallet, you know, crisp new bills. And I carried that money around for over a year. What? I, every time I walked on, I was like, man, I keep forgetting to take this money out. Yeah. And it was, you know, about a little over $400. Just Chris, you know, that, he was there for anger management. And I just mm -hmm. had the money in my wallet. And I was just like, I got to take this money out. I got to do it. Before COVID, I was at the bank every day, every week. <laughs> I was at, right. you know. You know, for you know, putting in the money from the classes and whatnot. Okay, therapy is insurance, so that's different. But just putting that in, and I carried that money. I didn't go to the bank, gas stayed in my car. You know, all of that. So all of this stuff now is that they're getting us back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, we didn't get no gas. It's up. Shoot the gas prices up. Oh, food is up. Everything is up. Everything is up. Rent. Mortgage, it's a seller's market. If you're trying to move, it's 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 difficult right now. It's difficult. I'm I'm finding that um there's an article the other day or something on YouTube I watched where um there's a lady in this neighborhood, she's selling her home for six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. You're like, yo, mm. ain't nobody buying that for six hundred and twenty thousand dollars. You know, yeah, yeah. and then the house two down, you know, two houses down from you sold for five seventy five. Nobody's buying that. So I think now she's down to five uh, to six twenty. <laughs> she's down to uh, no, it was at six twenty. She's down to like five ninety. Like just keep on coming down, keep coming down. But what you're finding is, you know, through the whole thing that happened called COVID and the crisis is that major investment companies like this one out of Canada is coming into the U.S. and they're buying up homes, like neighborhoods and mm. subdivisions that go up. And so they're charging all types of, you know, crazy rent. And now you don't have anyone to come and walk you through the home or whatever. They just give you a code. And so you walk through, there's nobody to deal with, you know, there's a property manager or whatever. Mm. But the bottom line is, there's no haggling. There's no nothing. You can either take it or leave it. And so mm. it's like, well, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. We're going to send you a list. Here's all the things you check off if there's a problem. This is a smart home. Here's the code. Nobody's going to come out and hold your hand. Nobody's going to talk to you. And this is what they're doing. So when the economy came back, the housing market never did. So they never uh, mm -hmm. built houses and prepared for all of these people who need homes now. That's the issue. And that's why people can charge crazy amounts for, you know, their homes. It's, it's, it's bad. You three bedroom, you're charging, you know, $2,500 $2, a month for a three bed, no garage, no yard, no nothing. That's a, before that would get you a nice size house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For that price. But I digress. Who else that, to... Well, you know, that's a good point you made because we've been had getting calls about um, a house we have in Colombia. And they're like, we're ready to buy the house. You know, um, we want to come and see the house. Are you having any issues? And I'm like, ah, something is wrong. <laughs> so that's what's going on. There's a shortage of homes. Yeah, it's a short of, shortage of homes. They said 40. Um, 40 or 400 million or something like that. They should have built wow. by now houses and they haven't done it because, and so you have all of these people, you know, who are coming in and building homes and like they'll, like they start a new subdivision 
And so that company may come in and purchase like, if there's like a, mm. it's a small, it's like a hundred homes in it. That company comes in and buys like 50 of those homes. So, you know, they put these smart uh, keypads on them and you want to go in and see it. You got to show your ID when nobody comes out anymore and they just punch the code in the door. They know who went in because you've given them your driver's license or passport. You just walk around the house. When you're done, it automatically locks. It's, yeah, it's different. It's different. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Dr. Park, I just want to say one more thing. And I just want to thank you for saying that distractions are good. Mm -hmm. Because Pastor Janie and I had this conversation just today at dinner. <laughs> And I was telling him about how I'm always distracted with something. So mm -hmm. now you're telling me that distractions are good. They so just I'm remind look us at that it. we got to get back to what we were doing. Yes, that's They're how part I'm of life. look at it a different way. I have to be focused and get back to what I'm doing. You know, right. as a matter of fact, even while you guys are talking today, I got some people outside and they kept hitting my fence my gate and I'm like I kept doing this and who is that distractions but then I came right on back into <laughs> into the Bring presentation now let so, me say this you. now <laughs> we're talking about distractions not ignoring so oh. those are two different things <laughs> okay I'm distracting right now I'm distracting. <laughs> Dr. Park said that this was good <laughs> Somebody banging your fence down and you look like I feel like you ignore me, woman. I'm distracted. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay, yeah. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else? As they said, communion. Have we overlooked anyone? Hello. Way up in the balcony. Where were you guys when we passed this out, man? We gotta wait. <laughs> oh, you ever been to a big Hi, church? Hi, Dr. Parks. Hey, um, who is that? I wanna, I wanna thank you for the meeting today. Um, one of the things that was interested in learning is understanding how um, we miss certain things and not realizing that we are in grief. We grief grieving it. Um, so I was in that uh, time frame where I couldn't graduate in person. And I looked forward to that, you know, being a mom with children and having completed my master's during the most of this um, pandemic and not being able to celebrate as I would have liked to really, you know, put a damper on things because, you know, I went through that process. That was a hard, one of the hardest things I've done. Mm -hmm. um, and not ha having the opportunity to graduate and fill my, my what do you call it, your cap up in the air and all that cele yeah. celebration. So I, did, I never looked at it as a loss of something. So that was interesting that you had that in one of your slides. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, <laughs> really, I, I picture we'll, I'll go out to dinner, I'll have friends and family. I had the whole thing set up and I didn't I couldn't even invite anyone because we were in the height of COVID. It was last year. So <laughs> I couldn't even have a gathering. So I was behind a Zoom system marching in my living room, you know? So um that's something that I will never be able to do again. So that 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 was a it great loss work. in my opinion. Um so yeah. I kind of felt that really I did because I felt like I for me, I have a brother, he graduated. We had something big when he had his master's. My parents also are grad students. So I was the last in the family um, to have mine now. And then there was no celebration. <laughs> so, I mean, I did have something that occur. Um, you know, I went out a little bit, but that's that wasn't the idea of the celebration that I had anticipated, so. No pomp and circumstance, huh? No, no. <laughs> they play it at every grade. Ba, 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 nope. Ba, ba, it was a recording ba. online. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? Now that things are kind of lifted, I think you ought to do something. You can do it whenever. I mean, it probably does not have the same effect, but hey, let's throw some type of party or do something and throw your cap up in the air. 
<laughs> you know, you can still do that. Even though we can't see you, you know, I like seeing people when they ask questions. <laughs> well, I can't see you, you know, but you can throw, there you go. Okay. Throw your cap and gown. I'll go run and put mine on. I'll put mine on <laughs> and I'll call you name Lulu Ali. Ah, everybody's screaming for you. <laughs> I'm just trying to celebrate you. I'm just trying to do something. That's awesome. Anybody else? Nobody? Okay, well, Val. I hope this was beneficial. You know, um, I um, I try to, you know, when Karen calls me and says, this is what we need. I got to get the list of them. I'm like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> just, just let me narrow it down. So, um, you know, it was, she called me and was like, hey, I need you. And I'm like, uh, you know, he's like, what are you doing Saturday? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> and I thought about it and I said, well, let me go ahead. And then I get this list. I'm like, well, tell me what you help my family. Help me help my family do what? What are we talking about? Because there's so many ways to help your family. You know, so many different ways you can help. Um, I can talk about, you know, anything. You know, even with domestic violence, how can you, you know, I can stop being, you know, stop having power and control over my family. We can talk about that. I can identify, you know, um, defining abuse and battery. What's the difference between the two? You know, people don't know. And, uh, you know, how to create a trusting relationship, just different things that can help the family. So I said, all right, here. And I just started talking and she took everything down and then she kicked it back to me. I said, write this down. I said, because I'm going to forget it later. <laughs> so, you know. Here we are. I really enjoy, you know, I may have to come up there. Are you guys doing in, in house services now or no? Next month. Next month. Okay. Next month. Yeah, I may try to get on up the blades big up there. She was come on the blades. Come on, come on, come on see there. the blades. Yeah. See the blades. <laughs> come, come to the over. blades and see what's going on up there. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. Pastor, well, Pastor Janie, can you give some remarks before I tell us about next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I just, I'm telling you, I want to thank Dr. Parks because um, he was the minute man for us. Mm -hmm. um, our presenter could not make it because he, he'd be traveling on assignment. Um, so we thought of Dr. Parks to come in and just, you know, do a second half for us. Of course, we had him before. They said that's a good choice to bring him back because not only is he, is he a therapist, he's the therapist who was a comedian. You know, and laughter and laughter is good medicine for the soul, anyhow. You know, so, so yeah. we had the we had the combination of a therapist and a comedian together. It makes it even lighter as you come into your learning. You know, it makes it more jovial. So I, I just want I just want to thank him so much uh, for for stepping in um, at the last minute, doing this for us. We appreciate you so very very much. Looking forward to have you in person uh, with us as well, where we can just dialogue together and folks can see you and just ask you questions there. Um, but this has been, again, again, wonderful. Um, each week, um, we're hitting grand slams, you know, so I just praise God for that right there. Um, and I praise my team, um, Val, uh, um, Karen, um, um, you step in when Karen Brown is, not, is, is away, so we keep it going. Amen. We praise God for that. Praise God for all of you all to come on um, to listen and to hear. I pray that, I pray that as you've been listening, that you are gaining some tools, you're gaining some insight. Um, you're learning about yourself as well. And now you're learning that it's okay for me to get help. It's okay to get help. When, when, when the therapist has a therapist, it's okay to get help <laughs> to the bottom line, you know? So, um, so I appreciate all of you guys. So just take this valuable information and, and, and don't just have head knowledge, apply it, use it it will help you to be better. So again, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, Dr. Well, welcome, Parks. welcome, welcome. <laughs> thank you, and we will, <laughs> we will see you when our doors open in the future, so we appreciate you very much. Uh, now I just want to tell us, we are we're to week five, and we've completed week five, and our toolkits are really full. Um, we do have another, our last speaker next week, and let me share my screen so you can see it. Can everyone see that? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So this was our our wonderful lineup um, to the, on the left for this weekend, and our very last weekend is Dr. Jennifer Jill Schweitzer, and I'm praying I pronounced that correctly, um, but she will close our six week conference, and she will be with us Friday evening at seven thirty, Saturday at twelve noon, and Saturday afternoon at four p.m. And she'll be closing with the state of our mental health, embracing love, the survival toolkit to emotional health and spiritual self-care, allowing healing to start. So please, please, please join us next week. Please go back and look at our site in the resource section so you can catch up on what you've missed in the past. And then please be with us next week for our um, conclusion of this wonderful conference. I've learned so much during these weeks and I'm, I'm very blessed and, and thankful. So um, at this time, I just want to tell everyone thank you again and please tell your family and your friends to join us for our last week. And um, Pastor Janie, if I can ask one more favor, if you'll please close us out in prayer. Okay, let us, let us bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Father in heaven, Lord, we are so thankful, so grateful for all your blessings and loving kindness towards us. We thank you for the time that we have spent together. Time, Lord, that has been well spent. Time in learning, time of refreshing, time of just revitalizing ourselves. We thank you for our presenter for this afternoon, Lord, who shared valuable tools with us to help us to navigate and understand some of the feelings and the things that we're going through now. We ask even now, Lord, that as we come before your presence tonight, that we would just take everything that we have been learning and apply them. But above all, never forget to depend upon you as well, because you truly are our strength. You are our source. You are our help. So as we come before your presence tonight and every single day, we ask your continued guidance and direction. May your spirit speak to us, lead us, and guide us. Guide us to the right people to whom we can talk to and open our hearts up to and who can just help us along life's journey as well. Tina bless Dr. Parks and his, his ministry as well. As he continues to minister those Lord who are hurting, who are in pain, no matter what it might be, whether it be abuse, uh, whether, whether it be violence or drug, whatever it might be, may you bless his ministry. Continue to give him wisdom and insight to help those individuals who come to him seeking a way out. So bless him, bless all those who have been on the conference tonight. May they also, Lord, be blessed by you. May they also grow and increase and be well. Father, we thank you just for all that you have done and that you're going to do. Thank you for our health team also. I pray in your name, amen. <clears throat> thank you, everybody. Thank you again, Dr. Parks. Y'all have Thank a good night. You. Good night. All right. You guys have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Karen. All right. Bye, Val. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Pastor. Bye, Dr. Parker. Dr. Parks. Mm -hmm.